uh, can the game be played in, in an out-of-work setting with delegates from various teams rather than just one team? Well, the beauty is these questions, um, they're, they're questions that I've um, been thinking about a long time and they're common, they're common because we're all, we're all in slightly different circumstances, but the same circumstance in a funny sort of way. And the short answer to that is, yes, it can be used with, with um, a group or delegates outside of a work setting. So just as, like Kaylee talked about there, her workshops uh, were with people that didn't work for a team. They were with various organizations, leaders from various organizations coming together. And funnily enough, it's actually my favorite thing to do now because I get to share the game with as many people as possible when I bring 30 or 40 or 70 people together in a room who don't work together to learn about the game. When you do that, though, you don't take them through the map, the full map, your emotional culture workshop, as you've learned in that workshop in the masterclass, because, because people don't work together, the outcome of that session isn't to define the emotional culture of the team because they aren't a team. So I think about it in two ways i think one those sessions are more my philosophy is they're more about showing people how to use the game so it's a learn a lunch and learn type thing or a learning it's a learning event and i talk about that up front i say today's about helping you learn how to use this game but then i then focus generally on two conversations that can apply for um, groups that don't work together, groups, um, leaders of various different teams. And the first one is I, I focus on the self-awareness piece. So the gold cards, how do I want to feel in my work? So in those sessions, I'll always get individuals to come up with their top five things they want to feel and not feel at work. So my success relies on feeling these five things and I don't want to feel these five things, but I might. And I explained at the start, especially if there's leaders in the room, that's important because we have to manage our own emotions before we can manage our team. So the self-awareness piece is a, is a really critical part. And funnily enough, even now when I run leadership workshops, I still start with the self-awareness piece. I think maybe, Donna, funnily enough, when, we, when I worked with Glenn that time, I think that was the first time I tried it, where we went through the self-awareness cards before we then went into how do we want our team to feel. Right. Because um, about that point in time, I'd be running workshops where I just focused on leadership, going how do we want our people to feel and not reflecting on self. And I realized that we are missing a bit because by starting a session with how do I want to feel, we can have empathy for our people because you'll yeah. automatically then be able to go, oh, I, yeah. Well, I then ask the question, imagine if you do this with your teams now, with your people, and you've just done it. So you're naturally uh, more aware of what it's like. So w when I bring disparate groups of people together, I always focus on taking them through or teaching them how to come up with the top five things they want to feel and the top five things they don't want to feel. You can, if you're running an hour-long session, you can spend an hour just on that. By the time you do the weekly retro, you tell them the story behind the game and why it matters, and then you get into that. That could be a 60-minute session. And at the end of the session, everybody walks away with a list of top five for what they want to feel and not feel. And then you can then challenge them to go away and find one teammate and try it with, or one employee, uh, one employee sorry, and try it with them. And I love challenging people at the end to say, why don't you go away and pick one person and try it with? Because it gives them something to go away and do. The second focus I might take on that type of environment or that type of session with disparate leaders coming together is, is the leadership question. So how do you want your people to feel? And teach them how to go through the process of defining the top five things they want their people to feel and the top five things they don't want them to feel. And then uh, explore potentially in the session if you've got enough time that maybe if you're going up to an hour and a half or two hours, what the rituals, behaviors and actions are to reinforce the help people feel more of the pleasant and manage the unpleasant. That then comes down to time, how much time you've got. Because if you've only got 60 minutes, you can't do the self-awareness and the leader and anything else from that because it will take an hour really. If you want to do it at any sort of level of meaning, uh, meaningfulness, I think. Yeah. The question around the focusing on the leadership aspect though, I think is, is kind of powerful depending on who you've got in the room because uh, you will be aware of the question, hopefully on the pink card, which is, can you see that there? How do we want our people to feel at work? It's not quite. Um, what you can then get people to do is um, decide how they want to define people. Because people could be their employees. It could be their players, their players if they're a coach. It could be their students if they're a teacher. It could be their clients if they're a consultant or coach. You can define people in, in any way that you like. Um, but if you've got a group of consultants or coaches, you might do it from the perspective of how do you want your clients to feel 
or if you've got a bunch of teachers in the room, you might get them to do it. How do you want your teachers, how do you want your students to feel? You can, you can change that leadership conversation based on who's in the room. Um, but generally speaking with a, like I did one last week or two weeks ago with uh, actually, Donna, you'll know the Project Management Institute New Zealand, the industry group for PMI, PMI NZ. So about 30 project managers in Wellington and I got them together for it. And I had, I think I had, might have only been an hour. And in an hour, I got through the weekly retro, the story behind the game and getting to the top five things they wanted to feel and not feel in their work. Yeah. That took me about 50 minutes, maybe 55. And then the last, for the last five minutes, I taught them how to use it from a project management perspective. Yeah. To help review projects. So that's what I did in an hour with 20 people who don't work together, who just came together for an experience. Yeah. So, Wanda, that's, that's how I start to use the game or play out the game with uh, delegates from various teams if they're not inside the same organization. Yeah. Does that help? Thank you. That's really useful. Nice. As part of the EC, the Emotional Culture Club, I'm going to share a whole bunch of uh, plan, like workshop plans, like a half an hour plan, an hour long plan, an hour and a half, and a two hour one, like different versions of it that you could then follow depending on how much time you've got and how big your group is. Um, because I think those sessions are really like, as you've heard from Kaylee, she's run two of them now. They're really powerful ways to create an experience which then generates interest, curiosity, intrigue, which then can then, from a business perspective, generate business. Or if you're doing that internally, and it generates interest from your leaders internally to then um, run stuff inside the organization or help internal teams. Yeah. 